es el canal que vamos a tener original y lo vamos a tener en inglés y en español. Entonces, si quieren escuchar esa conversación, la original se pueden quedar aquí. Pero si quieren elegir un solo idioma, tanto inglés como español, tienen un botoncito abajo que dice interpretación y ahí se pueden conectar al idioma que ustedes quieran. Ok, so this is going to be the original channel. We are going to be talking here in English and in Spanish. But if you prefer to listen the whole conversation just in one language, you can go down here, that is says interpretation, and you can connect to English or Spanish. Ok, so, yo creo que vamos a tener un evento muy interesante. I vamos think we're going to have a very interesting event. We are going to talk about a fascinating topic, which is the silver economy and all of the potential the region has. And the first thing, I'd like for us to do is to share the publication we are presenting today. We have for the first time mapped all silver economy actors in the LAC region. We have identified 245 uh, actors uh, that are already offering products and services for older adults. Uh, we have identified trends. You will see this in the chat. And without further ado, let me tell you, we'll have a very interesting panel with our president, Mauricio Claver Caron, but also the Q&A will be open. So if you'd like to ask the panelists any questions, feel free to do so. I would now like to introduce all of the panelists and let you proceed to the conversation. We will have Martín Alejandro Lema Perreta, Minister for Social Development in Uruguay, Sergio Kaufman, the uh, President of Accenture Argentina. We'll have Julio Domingo, the uh, general director of the MAPRA Foundation, Maurice Litvak, the founder of Maturi, Jimena Abogabir, the co-founder and uh, vice president of Travesia 100, and uh, Junko Kishimoto, manager of Entity Data Institute. So we open up the Q&A for the panelists, and I now give you our president and moderator, Mauricio Clavacaron. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Pablo. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this seminar. Of course, for us, the silver economy is a very important strategic matter, in particular these days, and uh, for two reasons. One is the future. The LAC region is a rather young region compared to others around the world. One out of eight people are more than 60 nowadays. But uh, in 30 years, things will change. And very quickly, the percentage of older adults will double and will become the uh, third uh, most aged region in the world, will no longer be the fifth one. The second point has to do with our vision 2025, which centers on the economic recovery on the region. And the silver economy will create millions of jobs that will have a great impact. Just to give you some figures, the ILO, calculates that only in care about 2.4 million jobs will be created in Latin America and the Caribbean over the next 10 years, to which we should also add the building of housing, health services, transport adaptation, urban setting adaptation, financial services, tourism, and so on. So there's an ocean of possibilities there and a great chance, I think, for us to start working. So let us really understand the industry properly. This is what we want to do with this panel. This is an opportunity. So the first question now, and I would like for us all to understand, could you please explain the size of the market, what areas are included, what areas are not, and who could perhaps talk about the potential as well? And since there's quite a lot of us here, I will kindly request you to be uh, brief and stick to two minutes in your answer. So please feel free to discuss and uh, participate. I think we'll start with Junko Kishimoto. You go ahead, please. Hello, and thank you for today's invitation. I think I can explain the outline of Silver Economy. I work in a telecommunication company in Japan as IT consultant on healthcare industry and aging. First, what is the Silver Economy in, in my understanding? Uh, that is not just a health and long-term care market uh, for the for for the elderly people, people uh, but including satisfying uh, their consumption, living and health needs, uh, promoting employment, and recently uh, it seems that the political idea for, of forming a potential needs oriented economic system uh, for the aging population. Uh, called aging policy, uh, it also included it. Um, 
Next, uh, let me share some numbers. Uh, in Japan, 30% uh, of uh, the population will be the elderly people in 2025. Uh, that is uh, more or less the level of Latin America and the Caribbean in 2050. Since Japan is a top leader in aging society in the world, uh, the Seba economy has been discussed for more, more than 10 years ago. At present or, or near future, uh, the economic scale of the Seba economy in Japan is said to be 1 trillion US dollars, and it is estimated to be 15 U uh, trillion US dollars worldwide. How big? Uh, especially in Japan and Europe, uh, the silver economy is regarded as one of the largest factors of economic growth and job creation. And it is expected that innovation using new technology such as robotics, uh, AI, uh, and IoT. So, yeah, no, that's a brief explanation. Thank you. is going to be key and, and the innovative solutions that is implementing uh, are going to be key for our region uh, so really appreciate uh, your input and we look forward to working uh, more as a great example uh, for the region the lessons that can be learned uh, in that regard which is a wonderful uh, opportunity regresando ahora a, al español eh, going back to spanish now obviously um speaking about the silver economy and entrepreneurship the mapper foundation is working on this so i would like to ask you what you do and what uh, you've uh, learned along these lines julio domingo thank you mauricio last year we launched our research center on the senior or silver economy our genomics uh, research center aims to project a positive view of demographic aging. We don't disregard the challenges involved, for example, in terms of pension systems, healthcare, or long-term care, but we think that the potential contribution to society in terms of the senior segment offers a great opportunity to boost economic growth, help address some imbalances while helping people be happier. From a comprehensive perspective at the research center, we examine the behavior and role of seniors in the economy, both on the demand side. In fact, we have published the first consumption, a senior consumption indicator, and we are working on the second edition. And we've also worked on the supply side. And we have recently published a guide on senior entrepreneurship. The center's work helps citizens and institutions, as well as certain uh, geographical areas or businesses, make the right decisions to lengthen the uh, job life, improve the lives of seniors, and also lead to savings when uh, looking at the um, needs of the old age while developing projects that will increasingly serve the older population. In addition to these activities and research, the center supports uh, entrepreneurship with a social impact. And in this regard, I would like to briefly refer to the Social Innovation Awards of MAPFRA Foundation. On Monday, we inaugurate the, uh, la the uh, fifth edition. And as from the fourth one, we already have a specific award for the senior economy. And through these awards, we seek to encourage and raise the visibility of innovative projects, both in Europe and Latin America, which encourage the participation of uh, mature adults between uh, 55 and 75 years of age in our society through training and employment, social protection, leisure uh, options, um, inclusion, housing, and so on. So ultimately, it's about solutions that will really give opportunities to senior citizens um, with a view to having a truly inclusive society that takes them into account and that can also make the most of what they have to contribute, which is a lot. And we have also uh, created a social innovators network, Retinova, which helps us uh, foster the internal exchange and sharing of knowledge and peer support for them to discuss projects and best practices. And I would like to wrap up and take the opportunity 
to congratulate the IDB on its Silver Economy Challenge. I would like to invite the challenge winners to also take part and collaborate as part of our Innova network by sharing experiences. Thank you very much, Julio. Silver Entrepreneurs is a very interesting matter. And also, not just the senior adults, but also uh, entrepreneurs are already looking at ways to offer specialized services. We have Morris and Jimena here with us. And perhaps you'd like to tell us a bit about how you view this, um, what it is you do, and how you got there. Shall I kick off? Thank you very much for the invitation. Our motivation is the paradox we face today as a society in that baby boomers, we want, can, and need to continue to be useful and feel useful. And however, doors are closed on us and the inevitable decline towards senility begins because we are prematurely left out of the job market. In fact, we have 50 year olds that get to experience this. After all, work is not just about uh, economic resources, but it is also a safeguard against senility. On the other hand, we see uh, in our children and grandchildren that they don't want to have children. What sort of a world are we going to bring more children into? So as the MIT rightly points out, they use a metaphor saying that humanity looks more and more like a uh, boat with uh, fewer oarsmen, increasingly less oarsmen and more passengers, which is a great metaphor. Uh, for unsustainability. So we created Travesia Cien as a business that helps us advance transition towards 100 years, trying to intercept this evil um, drift that seems to be afflicting our society. So we start by our own selves, um, suggesting or proposing a life project going forward, like we did when we were young, self-care, reinvention courses. We help companies um, understand and cater to the needs of seniors as uh, clients, customers, collaborators, uh, suppliers. Also, we work with the media so that they stop treating us always as victims that need assistance or treating us like children that don't know how to look after ourselves, such as was the case with the pandemic. And finally, in the job world, also highlighting the possibility of having seniors as a contribution to inclusion, but also making the most of all that cultural heritage and background we have built up over the years. That's what we're doing. Thank you very much, Jimena Morris. Well, here in Brazil, we have a created Maturi. I was inspired by, by my grandmother who worked to uh, the age of 82. And even, you know, when she stopped working, her health started going downhill very quickly. So I started to work on this and I found that Brazil happens to be one of the uh, countries that ages fastest in the world. And in the job and employment market, we still see a major bias. And we have 55 million people who are over 50 in Brazil, so 26% of the population, and it will become a lot more than that. So we have to start showing companies that it's important to keep and include seniors in the job market. So what Maturi does is just that, help senior citizens be ready to find a new job or to start new uh, entrepreneurial projects, because we know it's very important for them to know how to um, go about entrepreneurship projects. And we work with businesses around the country to create a new multi-generation environment that is inclusive as well, so that senior citizens can carry on working. As we are living longer and need to also make a living for longer, and you know, pensions are uh, getting more and more difficult. So we have 160,000 people already in Maturi. We are connecting with uh, multinational companies 
so as to create opportunities for continuing work and training with technology and all of these skills the current uh, job market needs. Thank you very much. And now Sergio Kaufman from Accenture. Sergio, we've talked a lot about robotics, the silver economy. Could you perhaps tell us about the links between technology and this area? Where is it headed? Uh, can you give us some examples, things that you think are promising? Uh, great. Thank you, Mauricio. We'll try and uh, compress our original one hour talk into a few minutes. OK, first of all, Accenture, um, in my particular area of responsibility, which is Argentina, Chile, and Colombia, during the pandemic, we grew by 3,000 jobs. We went from 12,000 professionals to 15,000. And by sharing the analytics and the logic behind this growth, what we see is an average age of 28, but we feel that with the current pace of change, we need to increase the average maturity. And this is not about um, hiring people who are 32 but about having people um, older than 45, especially women, many of whom had families and left the job market. And we've been tremendously successful by bringing on board hundreds of people over 50, 60, and even 70 years of age, which is interesting. If you mix this with the concept of robotics, cognitive robots learn and do uh, tasks, but they need an instructor. And here, the silver economy and the experience and all of the experience a person has built up over the years, you know, the technology itself is not that important because you may have a younger team member who might take care of that or even the uh, robot may learn, but experience is not provided by any technology. And that is a complement for young people. So there's a vast field for the silver economy as far as robotics, uh, and training are concerned. And the other point is innovation. Innovation groups, this is one thing we have measured, um, that have the same age range are not as uh, rich as when we mix the age segments. This is what we are doing now. And it's a source of work and jobs. And it's not just about giving people a place. The product, the outcome of mixing these heterogeneous uh, team members is really very positive, disruptive. You know, this idea that only young people innovate is fallacious, and we are seeing a major shift uh, and positive move in that regard. Great. And we have heard from the private sector, entrepreneurs, businesses that offer specialized services for older people. What about the public sector perspective? We are pleased to have Alejandro Lema uh, Perreta, the Minister for Social Development from Uruguay. It's a pleasure to have you with us. You are probably the most advanced country when it comes to uh, the silver economy and the social sector is a very important part of the civil economy, health, education, jobs, uh, pensions, care. How do you view the interaction between this social sector, the silver economy, what you need from entrepreneurs, from businesses, and from us at the IDB? Well, first of all, let me thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, warm greetings to you and to the representatives of the IDB and of other institutions. It is indeed an honor for us to share this event dealing with such an important matter, one which we uh, actually talked about recently at an event in our country. In fact, when we talk about older people, we're actually talking about all of us, because at one point we will hit that mark, or at least hope to get there, because we hope to be able to go through all stages of life. So it's very important to have this kind of meeting and to actually reflect on these matters and to have more institutional interaction. We talk about a social well-being as a collective ongoing uh, construction. It's collective because we need all stakeholders, institutions, individuals, entrepreneurs, so that we can get help to build that social well-being. And we talk about it being ongoing because it can't be limited to just one age segment when it comes to building social well-being. It would be a mistake to look at the situation of older people only with a focus on housing or food. That's a part of it. But there's another component that has to do with what we could call a 
social treatment, which is activities themselves, which have to do with recreation, with culture, with social and job-related considerations. And there's the difference between living and surviving. You know, if we are dealing with an older person, we need to work to ensure that they have more tools to have an experience, a life experience. And this is in line with seeking other approaches and arrangements, obviously with more openness in order for these people to be increasingly active. And we said this earlier, so that they are more active in having more uh, work opportunities in actually generating new uh, anecdotes. In other words, development and fulfillment should not be restricted to just a single age uh, range. So when we view the silver economy, we do so as a necessity, as something that we need, but also as an opportunity, because we have a country that has been going through an aging in its uh, demographics, and we uh, need to uh, face facts, face reality in order to slow down this process. We need to be partners and seek opportunities as part of the uh, entrepreneurial projects uh, highlighted a while ago. We need to work in partnership with different institutions so that together we can cater to the needs of this age segment. And also there's a matter of justice as well. There's a need for justice and people should not just survive when they're older, but should live and live out experiences, and hence the importance of dialogue and of strengthening interagency coordination. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. And now some questions that we get from our audience. A question for Sergio Kaufman. Can you share some examples on the use of advanced technology for this market? And would it be difficult or expensive to introduce these technologies in the region's countries? No. Actually, the cognitive uh, robot, although it sounds like a lot, is a relatively inexpensive technology. Building a cognitive robot, you know, would cost twenty to thirty thousand dollars, and uh, some years ago, and now costs a lot less. Uh, it's a robot that continues to learn. It's always available, so it's highly productive. And the technology to do this, you know, the language used to build this although of course some learning is required, the process is becoming increasingly intuitive. We used to have specialists who used to build this, and now we have specialists who may initiate the design, and then you have someone with medium level training that can do the maintenance. So the uh, individual machine, human machine, or silver cognitive element is really becoming increasingly uh, seamless, and I think we will increasingly see also more of that combination, cognitive robot and person with the experience. A question for Julio Domingo. How can we pensioners offer advisory services to small and medium-sized business? Well, actually, by staying active. And what we've just heard, the various examples, highlight an interesting economic sector in addition to a need to share knowledge and experience. There are people who have lived long enough to build up that wealth of experience, and it's important to maintain that vital outlook and that capacity to continue producing. In fact, there are several platforms and opportunities. This is something we have seen, and we have some experience here in terms of mixing teams comprising different uh, ages, age segments, and this is very enriching. And ultimately, it's about the value of knowledge transfer, which is precisely part of harnessing this silver economy. Thank you very much, Julio Domingo. I have a question for the minister. What are the main challenges when implementing financial services for senior citizens? Sorry, could you say that again? The question is, what are the main challenges in implementing financial services for senior citizens? 
We are in the process of strengthening our national care system, which is especially important for older people. And we are increasingly professionalizing and humanizing the care system. Professionalization means that we are seeking to improve the training of um, people who provide assistance and care. And we also want to improve the legal linkages and the importance of private players, the private sector should not be underestimated. We want to have that kind of profile. The Ministry of Social Development trains carers. We as a ministry wish to move towards a professionalization as regards the contracts we enter into with organizations that have more development and expertise in these matters. And of course, we think it is very important as well to have uh, projects that help raise awareness among carers as to their responsibility when they go into a home to perform care uh, functions. And we are in full swing now with the implementation of this, and we think there's plenty to be done going forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. I have a question now for Jimena. Jimena, could you talk to us about the issue of people of um, older age not being hired because theoretically they need to collect higher wages? I think the integration of older persons in the job market is uh, rife with bias. For example, that we are uh, sick more often or why invest if we're going to retire soon? And this puts up this invisible barrier. I think it's clearly in the digital uh, context a case. And if we hope to really want to uh, move away from mere survival and to have an experiential sort of living, we need to uh, overcome that digital barrier and uh, invest in this. And in Chile, we are working with Accenture and this has been a great experience uh, showing that we older people want and can want to learn and can do so when the right tools are there. So I think all the way from recruitment, access and possibilities that uh, exist in order to prevent people from retiring early, well, this is a way to ensure that private businesses also respect the human right to non-discrimination because there's still a black hole there that needs to be addressed. I absolutely agree. Another question for the minister. The uh, politicians get all of the pressure. So what public sector tips for um, older citizens to be able to become integrated into the job market. We are working on that. We've set up an experts committee uh, in our country. They are looking at social security and they are considering an incentives policy. With regard to the current status, I would dare say we'll have news next year as discussions are taking place regarding the uh, overhaul of the social security system in my country. I don't want to get down uh, into the fine detail because that's actually part of the uh, work of another agency. Um, but this is a very important matter on the agenda of our country. And the idea is to further explore those opportunities. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Sergio, another question. Sergio, how can we get in touch with those working groups uh, dealing with the silver economy? Well, at least in Argentina and to an extent in Chile as well, we are offering training. And if you actually look at the job postings and we uh, pursue a very aggressive policy in that regard, there are lots of requests for over 45s, which we uh, think is a segment with a huge potential for employment growth and uh, value contribution potential. So you will see that um, this will continue to be the case. And so as to start wrapping up, I would like to 
I ask you this question. Let's suppose it's 2025 already. What is your vision for the silver economy in that year? Imagine a tweet, a phrase that starts with uh, vision 2025. What would you like to say? And I will start with Junko. Yes. Yes, um, 2025. Yeah, I'm expected that um, technologies uh, such as AI and robotics will expand the body and brain and the people will be able to work and live activity forever. <laughs> My wish. Thank you. I, 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 I love it. Thank you so much, Junko. Jimena? Generaciones trabajando juntos. de todas las empresas y poderes públicos para que se fomente la inclusión el mantenimiento de las personas maduras en el mercado laboral y también going to allow for a, a bigger opening for seniors in the workforce and allow for more entrepreneurship Sergio well I a new concept I would say the unretired Gracias a todos. Ha sido verdad, it sounds verdad. great. Well, thank you very much. It's been a true pleasure to be with you today. And I love the idea of the unretired. That's a great idea for the future. I love the idea of this rejuvenation, this uh, new phenomenon where we get younger again. We're moving towards something that is key. And I believe that all of you are and have been innovators in this sense. And so thank you. We look forward to continuing to work together. I thank the entire team here at the IDB, IDB Lab, IDB Invest for everything that everyone is doing. You can certainly count on us as your go-to partners as we all embark on this great journey towards the silver economy and our effort to enhance it. And so thank you very much. And I thank our audience. Let me now turn it over to Pablo who is going to help us continue our event. Thank you very much, Mauricio. And I'd like to thank all of our panelists and attendees. Well, we're moving now to the last part of the event. And perhaps this is the most exciting part. We're going to see who has been selected following our call. Now, for those who uh, join us a little bit later, we're going to once again uh, share a link on the chat. And uh, with that, let me turn it over to Rene Arias, who is the CEO of IDB Lab, and also James Scriven, who is our CEO for IDB Invest. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, we're going to now talk about who has been selected as we look at this uh, call for our competitive process for innovation for inclusion. As uh, Mauricio was just talking about, what we have here is a key factor in trying to uh, boost the silver economy seeing it as a key part of the economic recovery in the region. And that multi-sector and cross-cutting component is that key factor that brings in together government and the private sector. And that is what we're doing within the group. We're walk working across institutions and also bringing together all three arms, IDB Invest, IDB Lab, and the IDB. Thank you all very much. There is a huge demand for services for seniors, and we believe that our region still feels that it is unmet. This is why the IDB as a group 
with all three arms wants to identify what the challenges are in order to address that and also tap into the potential that we have in users to provide services. We believe that IDB Lab and IDB Invest alongside the private sector, we're going to find these opportunities, focus on these opportunities and look at financial products, financial assistance and digitalization in order to make all of that happen. We are always driven to continue working on financial inclusion. And this is why we want to look at those who are currently disenfranchised, marginalized, left out, shut out. This is why we want to look at this segment of the population provide more efficient services, provide more services, and make it easier to afford. Now, in terms of our competition, we're going to reveal who has been selected. We are very happy to see what has come in. We have had uh, over 100 proposals from 27 countries, 21 of them from Latin America and the Caribbean, and six from outside the region. These numbers tell us that there are a lot of individuals and companies already working on the issue of the silver economy. Thank you, James. So let us give you a little bit more information about those who have been selected in the chat. You're going to see the full list there and also the reason why they were chosen. Here, I am going to reveal who they are. The Hospital Italian de Buenos Aires from Argentina, Aging and Wellness Center from Jamaica, Pasmental Sapi from Mexico, the Brazilian Association for uh, Doctors, HBR Group from the Dominican Republic, Neuroprof from Uruguay, the Center for Environmental and Social Services, the University of Peru and the University of Chile. We're also looking at the honorable mentions from outside of the region. And as we mentioned, we have gotten a number of offers from outside of the region, from North America, from Europe, and from Asia. Very well, for everyone who applied and was not selected at this opportunity, we encourage you to continue connecting with us so that we can work together. The value of this call for projects is to also be able to cre create a community around such an important topic and to also allow for cooperation and for sharing knowledge and information. So please look out for future invitations and opportunities to be part of this market and to continue to build this community. I would like to also invite you all to continue exploring the silver economy and go more in depth, but do that through the IDB Lab Forum, which is the flagship event from the IDB Group. And it is looking at innovation as a catalyst for a recovery that is inclusive, green, and resilient. It is going to be held this year from October 26th through 27th. It is going to be mainly done online. There will be some in-person meetings in Miami with invited groups. And you can learn more using the link that we are now providing over the chat. So we look forward to seeing you there. Well, thank you all very much for this event. We are doing great with time and we're about to end the event i would like to just remind everyone that everything that we've discussed has been made available on the chat we invite you all to also go on our website you can see the information here as well as our social media handles thank you all very much